where heresy and hypocrisy meet. The Gospel Sync, number 59, Matthew 7 verses 12 to 29, Luke 6 verses 43 to 49. Welcome back. Today, we'll be combining the Gospels of Matthew and Luke to discover how Jesus views both false teachers and those who don't live what they profess to believe. So let's dive in. The Gospel, Matthew 7 verses 12 to 29, Luke 6 verses 43 to 49. In everything, then, do to others as you would have them do to you. For this is the essence of the law and the prophets. Enter through the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow the way that leads to life, and only a few find it. Beware of false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. No good tree bears bad fruit, nor does a bad tree bear good fruit. By their fruit you will recognize them. For each tree is known by its own fruit. Are grapes gathered from thorn bushes, or figs from thistles? Indeed, figs are not gathered from thorn bushes, nor grapes from brambles. Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. So then, by their fruit you will recognize them. The good man brings good things out of the good treasure of his heart, and the evil man brings evil things out of the evil treasure of his heart. For out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, but not do what I say? Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, and in your name drive out demons and perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you, depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. Therefore I will show you what he is like. Everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them, he is like a wise man who is building his house who dug down deep and laid his foundation on the rock. The rain fell, the flood came, the torrents raged, and the winds blew and beat and crashed against that house, yet it could not shake it and it did not fall, because it was well built on its foundation, on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them is like a foolish man who built his house on sand, ground without a foundation. The rain fell, the torrents crashed and raged, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and immediately it fell and great was its collapse and destruction. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were astonished at his teaching, because he taught as one who had authority, and not as their scribes. My thoughts. Jesus is giving us a warning. Not every spiritual teacher is preaching the truth. I like what I heard someone say once, I keep an open mind but I also have a screen to keep the bugs out. So why keep an open mind? Why have a screen? How do we know what the bugs look like? Well, Jesus gives us some really good guidance here and it all has to do with proper alignment. First, we need to have a little bit of situational awareness. There's some really bad teaching out there and the one who isn't alert to such a problem is walking through a spiritual minefield. They are going to get blown up. In the army we had a saying, keep your head on a swivel. In other words you're constantly looking for danger all around. It's there you have to be able to recognize it and take action. And the best way to identify false teaching is by assessing it the way Jesus assesses it. We need to align ourselves with the teaching of Jesus in order to spot the counterfeit. Jesus tells us what the bugs look like and our awareness of such bugs prompts us to put in a screen. You'll know sound teachers by their fruit. It's interesting that Jesus points out the produce of a good teacher. They bear good fruit. I think this can be taken two ways, character and people. The Bible refers to both as fruit. Galatians 5 verses 22 to 23, John 4 verses 35 to 38. It's so much more than just having the right doctrine in our heads. So what kind of fruit are these teachers bearing? Are they just talking the talk or are they walking the walk? Are the people they are teaching being transformed by the truth? Are they making disciples of Jesus or of themselves? Have these teachers aligned themselves with Jesus by abiding deeply in Him to become like Him? 
Obedience is more than being super spiritual. There must be alignment of the whole person. From the heart, motives, to the words to action, it all needs to be aligned with the master. If anything is not in the process of being aligned, even if we see incredibly spiritual things like healings and casting out demons, or great teaching, or evangelism and baptisms, or gathering hundreds of people. Judas probably did most of that, there will be bad fruit. Jesus guarantees it. Wise versus foolish. The true test of a leader worthy of Jesus' followers is hearing and obeying his words. Knowledge and obedience. Never pit these against each other. Both are needed along with one other element, identity. I like to put it in these terms, be, know, do. It is part and parcel of the whole person being transformed by Christ. The three are like a grilled cheese sandwich, once it's grilled and you try to pull it apart, you get nothing but a mess. Listen to how the writer of Hebrews puts it and notice verse 7 comes before 17. 7 Remember those who led you, who spoke the word of God to you, and considering the result of their conduct, imitate their faith. 17 Obey your leaders and submit to them, for they keep watch over your souls as those who will give an account. Let them do this with joy and not with grief, for this would be unprofitable for you. Hebrews 13 verses 7 and 17 My story When my brother and I attended seminary together, we had a theology professor that was downright mean. He was brilliant and well-respected internationally for his knowledge of scripture and doctrine. But his treatment of his students was appalling. He would ask questions and if the student didn't answer correctly, he would have them stand up and berate them in front of the whole class. One day he was handing back the quiz we had taken the week before. He came to my brother and said, This was an excellent explanation of the doctrine. Wasn't your bachelor's degree in biology? Well done. Then he turned to me with a scowl and threw some papers at me and said, And you're the Bible college grad. He was not impressed with my work but did he have to embarrass me in front of my brother and fellow students? I wonder, with all that knowledge of the Bible and even being a well-known scholar, was Jesus impressed with the way he treated people? Obviously things were not in alignment. Our Action Plan Where does knowledge and application come together on this one for us as disciple-makers? Here's some assessment ideas. What kind of fruit are we bearing? Both character and people. Are you the Bible answer man for the whole church or is everyone reading their Bibles? Is B, no, D-O being equally taught and practiced or is it out of alignment? In order to avoid these two great dangers, heresy and hypocrisy, we need to do a good job of aligning the whole person, ourselves and others, with Jesus.